Sarah Heston, and these are my children, Claire and Connor, and we are members at St. Paul's Episcopal Church in Burlingame. Whether you're joining us for the first time today or a regular parishioner, we'd like to welcome you to today's service. Please check out our website for news, music, and resources for spiritual growth and connection. Thank you for joining us today. Blessed be God, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God be with you. Let us pray. Creator God, our souls delight. Your voice thunders over the waters, liberating the future from the past. In the Spirit's power and the waters of rebirth, Jesus was declared your blessed and beloved Son. May we recall our own baptism and be disciples of the Anointed One. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, 
and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and in the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. A reading from the Gospel according to Mark. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And the people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came down from heaven, You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Please join me in prayer. Gracious and loving God, help us this day to understand and celebrate your dream for the world, to be transformed in Jesus' love, to use our gifts to make a difference for others. Amen. The times were terrible. John was on fire with his relationship with God and declaring, quit the lying, the corruption, the greed. Quit the deceit and return to God. He was offering the ritual cleansing of immersion in the waters of the River Jordan. Throngs of people, Mark writes, people from the whole Judean countryside and all of Jerusalem were coming to that river. The times were terrible. It felt chaotic with their despot of a king who was simply a puppet of the Roman occupiers. People were seeking and yearning for a way, a way out of the chaos and these terrible times. 
They were yearning for some reassurance, looking for some direction, needing some hope. They came to the river, knowing something needed to change for themselves, for their country. John's message, tell the truth, confess, repent, return to God, was compelling. It spoke to something deep within them because the times were terrible. They were drawn to seek God. Maybe they just needed to know God was with them. They needed to feel some affirmation. Or maybe they had had an awakening, had a spiritual experience that compelled them to go to John and the river. They were finding like-minded others with similar experiences so they didn't feel so alone in the, these terrible times. In times like these, we need a spiritual experience to lift us. John said to all gathered that this river baptism of repentance was just the beginning. He says, according to Mark, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I have immersed you with water, but he will immerse you with the Holy Spirit. And he came. Jesus came down to the river, compelled by something that had been growing inside of him he wanted to get it out in the open now. It was time to go out to his community. And just as he was coming up out of the water, says Mark, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove upon him. And a voice came down from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. And so Jesus' ministry began with baptism in the river and then infused with the Holy Spirit. He was God's beloved child and confirmed in this, he could go out into the unknown of the wilderness and learn more. On Wednesday of this past week, we went deeper into the chaotic wilderness of these awful times. Ironically, that Wednesday was the Feast of the Epiphany, a season of new light. The days are slowly going brighter, staying longer. And it's a new calendar year. And so surely, this is all a chance for a new beginning, a new start. Yet, as the Electoral College began to count the votes, the day grew darker. The terrible was added to by the awful. Probably the isolation of being sheltered in place makes absorbing the news more intense, more powerful, harder to bear. How not to be lost in the chaos and uncertainty of these terrible times? It's so easy to lose sight of meaning, to lose that connection with God, to become deaf to the Holy Spirit that's telling you and me that we're God's beloved children. For me, I think some of that epiphany light did indeed tear through the day of that news. And it happened with the light of faces gathered at a Zoom prayer meeting. It was our usual Wednesday weekly gathering at 4.30 of a healing prayer vigil that many people 
uh, from the healing ministry has sponsored and committed to since the beginning of all this, basically in April. And all those faces gathered on a screen together to pray as we have committed to do each and every week for the healing from the pandemic of COVID, the pandemic of systemic racism, to remember all our black brothers and sisters who have been killed by the police, to pray for the natural disasters from climate change. And now, now we add to pray for our divided nation. And instead of being overwhelmed in the praying of all this and lost in the despair, in gathering to pray for this, to the same God, seeking the same Christ to lead us, we received the Holy Spirit and were reminded that God loves us. We were reassured of our identity as children of God, who is love. What we always say as we finish praying together is that we feel better and there's smiles on that screen and we give each other the peace. The act of naming out loud the terrible events of the day with others of the same intention in prayer, laying it out before God, this God of love, transforms us. We always feel a relief, a renewal. The heaviness of the day is lightened. One person said, I feel more refreshed from that, 20 minutes of praying, than if I had taken a two hour nap. From that simple weekly minutes of naming out loud to God, with others, the terrible and the tragic, the frightening and the failures, the Holy Spirit comes to us and we are renewed, reborn. We leave in the kind of peace in which we're able to bring peace out to others. This what I'm describing is the baptism of the Spirit that Jesus gave us. All we have to do is return to it. In this case, stopping and showing up on Zoom. That's what John's baptism was about. He was making ready his community to receive the Holy Spirit. I think in Dante's Divine Comedy, I have to shout out to Bev Hawk who loves this. Um, this portion of his poem describes this so perfectly. He writes, the love of God, unutterable and perfect, flows into a pure soul the way that light rushes into a transparent object. The more love it finds, the more it gives itself, so that as we grow clear and open, the more complete the joy of heaven is. And the more souls who resonate together, the greater their intensity of their love and the more souls who resonate together, the greater the intensity of their love. And mirror-like, each soul reflects the other. Jesus has given us the way to endure, the way out, the way to the river is the way of love shared. Each time we gather to share with each other our prayer, to our seeking, our confession, 
to share our hope and our despair and our mistakes. Each time we gather, drawn by something that's gnawing inside of us, gathering however we can, we are at that river and we can come out of the waters of this chaos and see that the way out is the way of love. On Sunday, we are gathering in the way we can at the river with our brother, Bob Gura, who has been called by something deep within him to claim and strengthen a life of listening and receiving the power of the Spirit. And the more souls who resonate together, the greater the intensity of their love. And the more souls who resonate together, the greater the intensity of their love. We souls who gather with him on Zoom will receive that same spirit in our witness to his baptism. That's the power of the spirit. That's how the way of love is revealed. That's how we receive the grace and the strength we need because the times are terrible and the only way out is the way of love.
Prayers of the People Loving God, you come into the world to bring light, peace, and joy. We pray to you with open and grateful hearts. We pray for all who celebrate the coming of Jesus to be in our midst. Give us grace to receive the gift of his life in our hearts. Strengthen us to bear the good news of his love into the broken places of the world. In your love, O oh God, shine, shine through, through your, your followers. followers. We pray for those to be baptized this day, especially Bob, that God's grace may fill their hearts with joy and courage. In your power, O oh God, renew, renew their, their lives, lives for, for service. service. We pray for those who lead the nations in these difficult times. May they humbly use the authority you have given them to nurture peace in the world. Give them the will, the courage, and the patience to offer mercy and justice to all people. We pray for the people of our nation, that we may work together for the common good. In your wisdom, O oh God, give, give us, us your, your peace. peace. We pray for those who are suffering this Christmas, for those who are inflicted with illness and disease, especially those suffering from COVID-19. Visit them with your healing power and comforting presence. In your mercy, O oh God, hear, hear those, those who, who cry, cry out to you. We pray for doctors and nurses and all who minister to those suffering and alone. We pray for those essential workers who serve us so that we may be fed and cared for. For all those who are in danger, who are exhausted and yet show up to serve. In your power, O oh God, give, give them, them your, your strength, strength and, and protection. protection. We remember those who have died. Receive them into your loving arms and comfort all who mourn deeply in this holy season. We especially remember today in prayer, Linda McLaughlin, Diane Miller, the Forrest family, Mark DeChocho, Michelle Sloat, the Hinkson family, Susan Lawson, Dylan Toma, Villy Young, Banafeshi, Laura Cope, Charles Vaughn, John and Arlene Borgeson, Nate Price, Alan Mulliken, Michelle Blair, Nan Kusalos, Tom Bryce, Renee and Bernd Kem, Wally Clevisol, Jim Prescott, the Murdoch family, and especially Charlotte. Holy God, hear the prayers we offer before you this day. Answer them as may be best for us, and guide us in your grace and truth. Amen. We gather all of longings in our heart in the words of Jesus. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Happy New Year, everyone. We really do hope that you're all taking good care of these first few weeks into 2021. And in addition to the invitation to the healing prayer every Wednesday at 430, we have about five upcoming events we would like to highlight for you this week. One, rehearsals for the choir school resume online on Tuesday, January 12th. Be sure to reach out to Director of Music, Dr. Susan Jane Matthews, for more information and for an online audition. Special 2021 opportunities include recording for an online March choir school concert and a July Compline for the Royal School of Church Music National Virtual Summer Training Course hosted by Duke University and National Cathedral. 
two. Also happening on Tuesday, January 12th, is a virtual choir webinar hosted by the diocese and featuring our very own Dr. Susan Jane Matthews, Director of Music, and Elizabeth Kimball, our staff soprano and virtual choir engineer. The webinar on Zoom begins at 6. Congratulations, you two. And everyone who's contributed to all of our virtual choirs this past season. Three. In commemoration of the life and ministry of Dr. Reverend Martin Luther King Jr., we will be hosting a conversation next Sunday, January 17th at 10.45 a.m. We will look for inspiration on how we ought to live today by rereading his letter from a Birmingham jail. Four, St. Paul's is proud to support the Peninsula Multi-Faith Coalition on Martin Luther King Jr. Day of Service. Due to COVID-19, this year's day of service is being thoughtfully reimagined. The day begins at 8.30 a.m. with an opening ceremony on Zoom featuring Congresswoman Jackie Spear and Reverend Lori Owens, president of San Mateo NAACP, speaking about the importance of celebrating Dr. King in 2021. Following the ceremony, volunteers will break into groups to work together online or in person on various projects that benefit our local community. Our very own CHIP and K FELAC are leading service projects. In fact, K is still looking for more people to sew masks if you've got time and experience. Lastly, if you're watching the service before Sunday, January 10th at 1045, join us for our very first Zoom baptism. Thank you to the Gura family for sharing this special moment of Bob's baptism with us. As a reminder, all these events and their details can be found on our website. We hope to see you in the coming days. Until then, much peace to you.
And now may God, whose spirit moves over the waters of creation, and God, whose spirit moves through baptism into the lives of his faithful people, give you strength and peace and courage for the living of these days, and the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Alleluia. Go now in peace as God's beloved to embody Christ's love in the world.